Ah, we're back! Finally, in the studio. Hey, Everett. Hey. Everett's uh, my advisor in Fifth Scale. He's been, if you've been following the build, you know who Everett is. He's been doing this a lot longer than I have. A little bit, yep. You know. How many trucks do you have? Oh, geez, if I had to count six-ish in the Fifth Scales. That's a lot of trucks. You must have a garage just for yourself. Basement. Nice. Yeah, <laughs> we're all basement dwellers. Uh, we got everything going on. Uh, we've been kind of hiding what we have in the back here, even though you had a little glimpse of it. Uh, we've been working very, very hard on this uh, over the last week, trying to get some stuff moving, moving forward. Yeah. Um, you know, just so it's not as boring. Yeah, we needed to get some work done. Do a little... Looks good. Did you see that? I know, I saw it too, and I was like... You got anything you wanted to add to this before we get into parts? Ready to go. We're ready to go. Okay, so we're going to get right into this because we've been doing lots of work to show you. So, yeah. over the last 400 and X number of videos that I've done, I've learned to show off the products that we use in the build series so we don't have to field a thousand questions as the years go by and this is here. We'll just tell you what they are now, right? Yep. Make sense? Got to have products. <sighs> okay. These are the Team Fat Dad CVDs and drive cups. Nice. So Aaron here, Medic, also picked up the drive cups. They're separate, they're a different purchase. You gotta buy both if you want both. Drive cup. You do need a couple stock parts out of the stock bones, actually. Uh, you just need two little pieces. We don't have them out, do we? No. Let me show them this. Look at this. So this is a bearing on the outside because I replaced it with the uh, Team Fast Eddy wheel bearings yeah. uh, kit that I got off of one of the fifth scale websites out there. Uh, check this out. Look on the inside, this is the difference of the Fat Dad's thickness, see the gauge in there, and the low C. So any kind of stress, you know, the Fat Dad's are there to kind of double up, right? So the boot on the back of this, this is completely greased on the inside. It's amazing, man. It feels like it's a real freaking car part. Yeah, lifetime warranty stands behind it. That's how quality this product as, is. As long as there's grease in the as boot. As long as, yeah, you gotta maintain it or there, you yeah. know, it's like any part yeah, in life. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so where do these go for the people in the audience that don't know what these are? Yeah, I know you're excited. You're looking at all this stuff. Let me just spin this whole tray around. I said, spin Axis RC. Okay, now I think we should do a cut shot and kind of get up in here. It's up in here. You, shall you? Shall you sure. look at that? I'll get Here's a camera. camera. Okay, so these drive shafts, they just plug right into the diff, right? So this is the front diff. Just like so. Nice. And then on top of that, you'd have to have the hub and the tire. Hey, what what is that? The Craftworks hub. Oh. So they have a couple different kinds for the low C. Okay. Which is kind of nice. Craftworks. Let me see that package. Nice. Okay. So this is the low C thread here. There's two different thread patterns for the two different ones. So this takes the nuts that come stock with the low C. Okay. These ones here come with a thread pattern for the HPI Baja nuts wheel nuts so medic here he's got an awesome little set of nuts that came <laughs> I love my nuts <laughs> <laughs> the other thread pattern so got to pay attention to what you're getting okay so these these are the Kraftworks uh, RC. My buddy Jeff manufactures these down I believe in Santa Monica uh, trophy truck wing nuts these especially go with those uh, 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 axle extenders. Is that what they are, axle extenders? Uh, these are extended, yeah, they give you a little extra. You can actually run, I believe, if somebody can correct me, but huh. I'm pretty sure with these you can run rears of the Baja tires on all four corners with these ax axle extenders. So it doesn't have to be the fronts because the fronts can right. only be run with the stock. This is a Bartolone. Shock uh, perch. It's a shock perch. Spring perch, yeah. Yeah, so we don't have a, uh, so it's. I believe it's all machined aluminum uh this way it doesn't kind of this the shock perch doesn't kind of kick out right some of the stock ones when you go over a big bump or something like that isn't a solid piece all around so with a rebuilt shock which were surprisingly clean for the amount of freaking abuse yeah, i was surprised Dude, all was the oil surprised. it was pretty much transparent a little on the cloudy side not a big deal um but yeah outerwear sent me uh well i didn't i bought these ones I have other colors, blue as well. Down there. Are they over here? Check it out. Blue, right there. Okay, so these are blue ones. They have lots of different colors, red if you wanted, right? These are pretty cool, I like that. <laughs> oh yeah! There we go, look at these. Now I got the products on the side. 
See how many manufacturers we had getting in on this, man? <laughs> Look at Capel. There's some pro lines right there. Here are the tires we chose to go with. RC four-wheel drive, big, big Mickey Thompson tires. Do we have them on here? Mickey Thompson Baja MTZ tires for the Baja or five. Thanks. Sorry about that. <laughs> uh, these are an aggressive tread. Check that out. These are basically, I'm surprised how firm the tire is. Yeah, I was too. These are much firmer than almost everything I have. And they, I've got several kinds. They smell like a freaking tire. They smell like... <laughs> <laughs> they smell uh, like a real tractor tire. So we put them on the truck. Also, I've got uh, some Skunk Works. Skunk Works? Skunk Works. Uh, bead locks, aluminum bead locks that I got. Uh, I think it was off of DDM or somewhere, TGN, somewhere. Uh, actually, I think I got it off of Skunk Works site when mm -hmm. I went there. These aluminum bead locks go uh, with the wheel nuts from Craftworks RC. I don't even have the, the Skunk Works box nearby. No, mm -mm -mm, no, it doesn't matter. Um, you're gonna see them up close anyway, you know? So we're putting all this stuff together. I think we've done enough of this. Yeah. We should do a little bit of wrenching, but you know what? You don't get to see the rest of this. We're gonna go ahead and assemble the other arm. I think it's time we look at a little motor maintenance. Would you agree? Yeah, definitely time. Let's have a look at that other one that used to be in there. I have my stock motor and I was very, very uncaring with it. <laughs> yes, to say the least, yeah. It, it needs a little TLC. So you guys are gonna get up close with us. We're gonna have my buddy Everett rip my uh, engine apart for you and uh, you get to see what the inside. Yeah, let's have a look, see what's up. Scale? Could be perfect, could be damaged. Look yeah. forward to seeing what it's like inside. Oh yeah, let's see what we got. Shut your goddamn cell phone off! Hey, huh, oh, we're gonna try something a little different today. Yes, we are. 430 X movies I've done, and we're actually gonna stand here for the first time and disassemble a gasoline-powered engine. Two-stroke engine. This is out of my low-C. This is the stock engine. It's a 26cc. Do you want do you want to tell them a little bit about it? The stock motor is actually a CY motor, which stands for Chung Yang. So it's very similar to the Zenoa motors, you know. Uh, you know, man, I did not maintain this worth the crap. Uh, and really, ripping into this truck has been a huge help in learning and not being a, a pussy, really, about getting into something this large. For me, right? Sometimes I'm scared to break into my RCs until they break. I'm glad I did because it's broken and... Only natural, I think, though, you know? Yeah. I think most people are probably that way. Yeah. I think, yeah, that's the probably. majority. Yeah. Um, so what we're going to do is disassemble this for you guys, you know, uh, piece by piece, hopefully, to see how far we can get down, get into the piston. Uh, like I said, Outerwear sent me a cover uh, for some covers for the low C. They knew we were doing this. They said, hey, check out what we got. I did not use one of these. Like I said, I used a piece of nylon that's all filthy and full of dust. Uh, and uh, if I would have used one of these, because you know what, this is not my first pull start on here. Mm. Same thing, inside I got dirt and crud and all that stuff in there and I pulled the, the thing out because I knew not you know, to rip on it, so yeah. I really cranked it out and it just stayed there. It was like a wet piece of spaghetti that, that came out and uh, just hung out. So I had to replace the whole thing. Then I put this uh, temporary solution, cost effective, but at the same time I didn't realize that these were only a few bucks. Uh, what are we taking off first there, Maestro? Uh, we're going to take out the spark plug and have a look at that first, for sure. Oh! Whoa! Looks like part of evolution. Should I show them? Yeah, I would. This is pretty nasty. Check this out. You can see all the carbon built up on it. Look at this. Uh, yeah, focusing. Yeah, there we go. Look at that. That's crazy that I've uh, actually fouled it that much. Why would this be? Um, mostly probably because of the oil you're running. Yeah, some sort of oil. Uh, I got it at my local hardware store because it's just a gas and an oil mixture. So I thought, okay, well, if it is a weed whacker engine, yeah. might as well take weed whacker oil. Uh, and it worked. Fortunately, even though I, had kind of, I was running it rich, I don't have a lot of experience with, with like tuning it for high and low and, you know, how, how, how lean is it and stuff. So I was kind of tweaking it. It works, it's just not the best thing for your engine if you want to keep your engine in top running peak performance. Pinion is done. Uh, and I, we're kind of interjecting, we're talking off camera as we're in between shots. And there's a few things that we thought we'd talk about. Clutch bell housing, is that what this is called on the clutch front? Clutch bell housing, yeah. It holds the clutch bell in the housing. This whole plate on the front, here, watch this. 
I'll bring this to you because I know you're all wondering, it's this plate right here, okay? Now I know there's a lot of fifth scale guys out there that know what I'm talking about. There's also a large audience out there. So this is where the clutch is in. Now, have you guys seen a clutch on the inside? I know I haven't. Yeah, well I have when they're brand new. And Everett took it apart for me, look at this. There is a clutch right there, okay? Now a lot of the nitro guys that have nitro engines are familiar with how a clutch works. Centrifugal force on a spring, that's not a lot of light. Sorry guys, sorry Everett. Uh, so these two shoes, they attach to the inside of this clutch bell, yep. right, where it's in the housing and it spins the front pinion in a bearing. This is the bearing up front. Feels pretty good actually. Yeah, it feels pretty good, yep. You know what I notice all over my fingers? Soot. Yeah. Dust. What's this? Yeah. Off of the clutch pads? The clutch pads, yep. So this is interesting because we're going to talk more about it in the next uh, episode when I go through my choice of what we're doing. There's a lot of dust in here. And, you know, I would think that that would not want to be in there. It would make it slip and burn a little bit. Look at the carbon. Yeah? Yeah. People were saying to me when I was breaking this in that this engine's pretty slow and that I was burning my clutch at such low RPMs. But you know what? Even though there's some dust in here, there is a lot of clutch pad left Yeah. on there. There is a good amount there. That clutch will last you a lot longer. Yeah, so that's cool. Okay, uh, air filter. I see air filter and I see a carburetor right behind it with high and low setting needles. Yeah, this is a 668 carburetor. Has a choke on it. Makes it a lot easier for starting on the colder days. I'm gonna take off the top shroud here and look at the rest of the uh, grass in there. Need a... Oh, oh. See if we can do it without loosening up the rest. Top part here is the cylinder on the motor that has the piston in it that the spark plug attaches to. Air, mixture, gas, spark, compression when the motor with the piston comes up, boom, motor go. Uh, for you guys out there, the pull starter from the Zenoa motor or the or the CY will work for this. Uh, so you have a few options of where you're shopping to grab a pull starter from. They're all interchangeable. In here, we have the flywheel. Okay, it's inside the fan cover. This flywheel is what helps start the engine. Uh, we'll get into the coil and show that in a second. And that's how it helps flow the air around as well. Very important to seal it up on the bottom. For you guys that just get these motors because you don't want to be breaking off those fins it'll throw off the balance of this for one and two it'll stop the cooling effect on the engine so we'll be talking about that with the next motor a little more in detail as well let's continue on taking off this fan cover now and we'll have most of the motor exposed uh good job by the way another round of applause he's like master <laughs> that's why i ain't doing it thank goodness because we have multiple angles on the camera pow look at that Killer RC switch. Do you guys remember when I did uh, uh, the video on that? I'll play it over here somewhere. This is an important safety feature. If you're running a fifth scale, if you're a responsible RCist, in my opinion, I would run a cutoff switch. The cutoff switch is designed to run with the radio and transmitter. When it loses a signal, it kills the engine, correct? Yep. Killer RC, kill switch. If you want one, great. If not, don't run it. It's your own loss if you lose it. Uh, we're gonna move on, take off the head. Uh, Everett was telling me earlier on today, and I can, I'm happy I get to explain this. I'm excited I get to explain it. <laughs> I understand a little more. Check it out, on top as my bird nest falls out because I had so, look at you, see all this? That's, that, is that normal? Yeah, it isn't, it isn't. I wasn't being good with it. I just had a good time, as RC should. But at the same time, I gotta maintain. And as we break this apart, we can see what bad shape my low C was actually in. Probably wasn't gonna be running too much longer, to be honest. No, and I was having trouble starting it and stuff, you know? So I'm glad we ripped it apart because now we're getting into the guts. Look at this, the flywheel you're talking about earlier. This is the coil which provides the spark. So when the flywheel spins, the magnet 
comes across here, does its magic, spark comes out. Next, we're gonna take off the cylinder here. See if we can do it with the drill. Mm -hmm. Got one. Comes the second, try to get through the rat's nest. Ugh. Here's the cylinder you can see on the inside here. Mm -hmm. Okay. The piston goes up and down inside of there. Piston's attached to a crank. Just rotates inside. Let's have a look inside there. A little dirty, not too bad, man. Looks pretty good. The basics of a motor. Okay, so you did it? All done. Done deal! Broken down. You got the head taken off. Yeah, I mean, you can break it down further, but for our purposes, we don't need to go any further. No, it's good, hey? Yep. Uh, good job. It's looking good. Can I take it and show them? Yep. I'm, I'm excited because I know some of them have never seen the inside of an engine before. And this whole contraption, you know, some of them don't even know how an engine works, you know. And so this is a good opportunity to show you the piston. Uh, this is the actual piston top. That's the piston, yeah. Yeah, itself, right? Goes up and down. There is a shaft that goes back and forth, but not a camshaft, right? Well, it's a crank, right? A so crank. So it's the way it spins, yeah. See, it's pushing and pulling. <laughs> yes, looks very dirty inside. Yeah, so this is the way it goes. He was showing us that there is a coil. The coil has a magnet that runs off of the flywheel. So this is the flywheel back here, right? Yeah. Should, should we even mention this is important that all these fins are here? This is why we have an outerwear shroud. Yeah. Yeah. There, see, look at this before I get into the mechanics. This is what he's talking about earlier, okay? This flywheel has all these fins. Oh, look at, I did bust one off, but I... It is, there you go. Look at, I had there a broken is. tooth right here. So what happened in this, I'm theorizing, is that there was a rock. There was yep. something, just like when I was uh, at the, at the uh, river. river. Yeah. yeah, there we go. Running, I didn't realize how important it was to have a shroud on the inside port where all these rocks can get in because it can break off teeth and start, A, the cooling doesn't yeah. work as well. No, yeah, it's, yeah, exactly, helping with the airflow. I'm, yeah. I'm surprised only one's broken, because usually once one breaks and it starts clanging around inside, with yeah. that rock, you have the fin and the rock now. That's true, all, they, the, all they the debris. They start breaking off, yeah, you're left with a few. Outerwares, is this it right here? Uh, what I should have been using is a flywheel cover from Outerwares. Like cheap. I know I've been pushing a lot of outerwear today. It's for no reason other than maintenance because I knew that I'd be able to show you all this stuff and show you why, right? Couldn't this, agree more. This shroud would have gone on the inside, or pardon me, the outside of the engine, but on the inside portion, which would have covered up all those exposed fins. Uh, you can't really see. There's a lot of dirt buildup on the inside. It's like just powder inside. Gross. So this is, you know, fit for rebuild, I guess. I could do that. Or we could just... Put in a new engine? Should we put in a new engine? We're going with a new engine. We can't fit it in today's video, can we? Not today. No, it's actually so awesome. It needs a video all by itself. Definitely. Yeah, okay. So are you excited about this engine? Can't wait. We made a good choice on this it's engine. It's a good choice. <laughs> We're gonna put in an engine. <laughs> I'm very excited about this. Uh, thank you for all your awesome work. A lot of fun, thanks for having me. Yeah, pleasure, man. Okay, so if it's your first time here, you kind of liked what you thought, uh, or you, you thought what you liked, or whatever, that sentence didn't make sense at all, <laughs> you can subscribe up above, because we're going to do more of these. And uh, if you guys want to leave a comment in the description, below the description, whatever you want to do, you're welcome to do that. I'm talking too much. I'm going to sign off for now and say, uh, see you guys next time on RC Adventures. Yeah. Come visit us on the forum on rcsparks.com. Well said. See you guys next time. Peace!